So we're in the middle of uh, the La Pahoy Hoy forest. This forest is part of the largest continuous chunk of native forest in Hawaii. It's uh, made up of this beautiful tree, Ohia, Metrosideros polymorpha. Ecologically, it's, uh, it's an anchor for our native forests, especially in wet forests like this. Um, it supports countless bird species and insect species and plant species. Ohia forests occupy nearly a million acres across the Hawaiian Islands, growing from coastal lands up to alpine systems, from our youngest lava substrates to our very oldest soils and bog communities. The ohia tree is one of the very first species to come in and start growing after a fresh lava flow. And you'll see from uh, some of the trees and different plants here um, that it's a lot different than the rainforest in Laupahoehoe. Hoi. So what we're seeing is our ohia, and they're growing with relatively little soil straight off of the lava rock. Ohia is beautiful, particularly the powder puff blossoms. I've seen amazing colors and combinations, and, and most people think red, but I've seen yellow and peach and peach with red tips and um, just a variety. One of my favorite things to do as a kid was when we were outside playing in the yard or cruising up and down the roads was to um, find a lihua blossom. We always had to be really careful not to break the lehua blossom off the tree because it was said, the Hawaiian um, mo'olelo or, or Hawaiian stories, um, it was said that if you were to break off the lehua blossom from the ohia tree, that it would start raining. And as kids, we didn't want to get stuck out in the rain and have to run home. So we were always really careful not to do that. Aloha, my name is Kikuhi Kili Ikanaka Ole Ohai Lilani. I'm a kumuhula. I'm a, when you're a kumuhula, you're a lover of the forest. I teach people how to connect to the forest. When we talk about the um, significance of ohia, um, we might want to start talking about the, the, the objects of the culture, like, oh, ohia were used to make houses, or they used to make hula implements. But I think this very surface. And so what we need to begin talking about seriously is um, really ask ourselves, if, if the ohia were not here, what about our life way might change? We feel very much that ohia is a part of us. It's really foundational in our um, establishing a connection for our children to this place. About six years ago, um, about a month after the birth of our daughter, um, we planted this ohia um, along with her, her afterbirth um, and her pico, her umbilical cord. And so um, she is forever connected um, to, to this tree because of its different characteristics and um, abilities. We want our children to be able to um, embody and be able to um, give back to, to this place, to their communities in the same way that the ohia supports um, and really is a foundational species in um, our Hawaii ecosystems. The ohia tree, actually the root word of it in Hawaiian means to gather. And the ohia is really uh, responsible for uh, gathering water and allowing the process of a watershed to function uh, properly. So you may have heard the term, the rain follows the forest. Well, the rain comes up Mauka 
the forest collects the water and then it seeps down into the ground and gets filtered through all the different layers of lava rock and then eventually ends up in our watershed. We all drink the same water. We all breathe the same air. And that water and that air is possible because of these people right here. So that's one of the reasons why we sing to them like we would sing to our baby. That's the same reason why, why, we, why we dance for them. Because all of the movement that we make with our hand is the same movement that the tree people make when the wind moves through their leaves like it's doing right now. Who do you think we learned hula from? began getting phone calls from the public. Those calls were, hey, my, you know, what's going on? My trees are, look perfectly healthy a couple weeks ago and now they're completely dead. Many, many people called us and encouraged us to come and look at these trees and try to help them figure out what was happening. And frankly, it was a, it was a mystery for quite some time uh, until we started working with um, Lisa Keith Rod, or what we commonly call rapid ohia death, um, is actually caused by ceratocystis. That's a fungus. Well, what ends up happening is the fungus makes its way into the tree, usually through some kind of wound, and it starts growing and colonizing the wood. Ultimately, the water supply of the tree, the water transport, starts to become clogged and it almost goes through a drought with leaves suddenly turning brown, remaining attached to the tree. You look up, you're seeing this dead canopy and ultimately it's because the fungus has infected the tree and ultimately killed the tree. When we found out how widespread and how aggressive the illness was, the first reaction is, is, um, is, is loss. Seeing entire communities of Ohia suffering. This is like losing whole communities of family members. These are, these are forests and trees that are quite beloved to many people in Hawaii. Unfortunately, what we're seeing is that each year we're losing approximately 10% on average. If that rate were to continue, we'd lose approximately 90 plus percent of the trees um, in 10 years. The top couple things that you can do to help not spread rapid ohia death. First and foremost, really not moving infected wood around. If you're out hiking, launder your clothes and you get that mud off your boots and potentially the vehicles and really um, never start in a place of infection and then go to that healthy, pristine forested area. In our minds, we need to be doing all that we can to protect those healthy forests. 
We're sitting on a one acre parcel of land that's owned by the Fort U.S. Forest Service in the town of Laupohoihoi. This specific place that we're in um, is called Kupua'e. Um, the name Kupua'e, uh, we gave this name to this place because of the, this, this common garden of Ohi'a that we have set up here that was created by the help of all the many Kupu interns that have come through the past several years. Basically what we help provide is we provide an internship platform for people to enroll in and then we have them engage in conservation sites all over the state and they do a variety of projects just like the one that you see behind us which is the Ohia Garden. I became involved in 2011 when I was in 11th grade and that was when I was first introduced to the world of conservation. It made me realize that I could have a huge impact wherever I set my hands down. About 800 trees went into the ground in the summer of 2014. And the hope is one day that this place will grow into a forest and that will start spreading. I think it's great that Kupu is providing this service, not just to get our youth engaged, but also to have our our conservation organizations become leaders and mentors towards these young folks. And U.S. Forest Service is one of our biggest partners. They engage a lot of youth, especially on Hawaii Island. This place will forever be a legacy because of all the energy that Kupu has given to this place. One of the things that um, I've been able to do with Kupu is uh, step into a leadership role with this program called Ulu Lehu Lehu. It's the Million Ohia Initiative, and it's focused on biocultural education, all surrounding the Ohia tree. And I'm working with kids, K through 12, as well as the greater community, with the vision of bringing back the Ohia into our everyday lives. So we want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to have an Ohia tree in their backyard, or maybe, um, at their school campus or at work, and we can start reestablishing our connection to this very special tree and the greater environment, and hopefully our awareness of conservation work and, and stewardship of this aina will increase. Really every concerned individual, be it scientists, cultural practitioners, the public, that, that I think is one of maybe the bright spots of Rapid Ohia Death and the actual collaboration and teamwork to really collectively solve a problem as big as this. We found a wild Ohia tree right on the outside of the Ohia Garden. We decided to go and clear it because it was getting choked out by invasive grasses. There's a saying here in Hawaii, Iola oi, Iola makone. Anytime you want to really let the tree know that you see it and you know it's there. And it's a reminder to us and the tree that we can't live without it. Someone once told me when I went into a forest on the other side of the island that sometimes the best thing you can do for the forest and for the trees is to just be with it. And I think this tree definitely knew that we were there and I think we all felt that. Over the last 20 years I've, I've come to really deeply respect and revere this species. It's. Uh, an amazing um, kapuna or uh, grandparent, senior grandparent to our larger family because it provides so much to Hawaii. What we want is for everybody and the babies and the children and the schools and the visitors and, and everybody that drives down the road, imagine the green trees. Listen to our friends at the Forest Service because they cry too every time they see another 10,000 acres pow. Myself and other scientists working on this species are really realizing how precious this resource is and how much we feel for this species, how much we're personally committed to making sure that this species persists uh, 
in perpetuity for our kids and our children's kids and for all the kids of Hawaii. What we would we do at this point when, when a cure is not evident? The first thing we turn to is dance. And then you turn back to Ula. And then you turn back to the prayers and you said, oh, Look at all of these prayers and these hula that we know that talk about the ohia, that talk about its, its longevity. Ohia is as old as the volcanic islands. That's what chants say. I prefer not to say rapid ohia death. That's not what we want. What we want is rapid ohia health. Without them, there is no life in the Hawaii Islands.